Hi there, my name is Craig and I'm here at Colonial Michelin Mackinac in Mackinac City. Now before I actually fire this musket for you, I'd just like to talk a little bit about how these weapons were actually used here at the fort back in the 18th century. Now, it should be pretty obvious that I am dressed as a British soldier, uh, specifically a member of the 8th Regiment of Foot. Those are the men stationed here from 1774 to about 1780. And something that's important to remember is that those men would have used these weapons on an almost daily basis, but probably not for the things that you would expect. Although we are talking about the era of the American Revolution, and although the war did have some really big and lasting impacts on the community here, there were no battles that took place here in the upper Great Lakes. The soldiers didn't have to go out and fight, so they're not carrying these things into combat. They also don't need to go out and hunt for their food because Michelin Mackinac is a great trading center. There are always canoes coming and going, loaded with tons and tons of goods. The British military went to great lengths to ship literal tons of food to the soldiers out here, so they didn't need to go hunt for their food. So if they're not hunting, if they're not fighting, what are they using these weapons for? Well, on any given day, there'd be a few men, maybe 12 to 15, assigned as guards. So they'd be patrolling around the fort, perhaps up on that catwalk that you see there behind me, acting as a first line of defense. They are kind of like the eyes and the ears of the army. But again, that's only a few men on any given day. The rest of the soldiers would end up using these weapons on an almost daily basis when they were at drill. Every soldier, didn't matter if he was a raw recruit or a multi-year veteran, which actually a lot of the men of the 8th Regiment were, they would all go to drill probably every day. So they'd be out here on this parade ground with their weapons, just practicing. You know, practice makes perfect, and that's especially true when you look at the tactics and the weapons that they were using at that point in time. Now, if you think about how the British military is fighting at this period, how really anyone is fighting at this period, whether they are Americans or the French or the Prussians, really anyone, they're all using essentially the same set of tactics. So if you've seen a Revolutionary War battle uh, in a movie, on TV, or in a painting, you can probably imagine all of the soldiers lined up together out there on the battlefield, and they're all going to be shooting their weapons at the same time. They're going to be delivering massed volleys. And to our modern 21st century eyes, that probably doesn't look like a very good idea, but it starts to make a lot of sense when you consider the weapons that the soldiers are carrying. Now, the weapon that the British soldiers have is properly referred to as a short land pattern service musket. This is introduced for infantry use in 1768. It is a 75 caliber weapon. That means the barrel is three quarters of an inch in diameter. But this is a smooth bore barrel, so the inside of this is just as smooth as the outside. This is essentially a piece of pipe. As a result, it just kind of lobs the musket ball downrange. It's not particularly accurate, especially when you compare it to a modern weapon today. But it will get the job done in the right hands. And again, that's why training is so important. Another reason that training is very important, this is a flintlock weapon. That means it relies on this flintlock mechanism right here to actually go off. Now, there are two main components to that. One is this piece right here. This is called the cock. It kind of looks like a rooster's head. Screwed into the jaws of the cock, there's a piece of flint, which is just a very hard stone. The other main piece is this bit right here. This is called the hammer. Sometimes you'll see it referred to as a battery in older sources. It's just a piece of steel on a hinge. When you pull the trigger, this assembly, the cock, flies forward, the flint strikes the steel, that generates a shower of sparks, that falls down into a small pan mounted on the side of the barrel. There's going to be some loose gunpowder in there. That should ignite, burn through a touch hole in the side of the barrel, propel that musket ball downrange. Now, that's kind of a lengthy ignition sequence, and it usually works, but not always. There's a lot that can go wrong. Even something as simple as the weather can influence whether or not this goes off. So for instance, it's pretty windy right now. That may impact whether or not this weapon fires. So you've got a weapon that's not very accurate, not very reliable, again, by modern standards. How do you turn that into an effective battlefield tool? 
You get a bunch of them together, all pointed in the same direction, in the hands of well-trained soldiers who can deliver concentrated firepower. And that's why training is so very important. That's why the soldiers here at Michelinmackinac would drill again and again and again, just like soldiers all over the world. They're practicing with these things every single day to make this into an effective weapon. Now I'm going to step back and show you some of that training. This first firing method that I'm going to show you is taken from a drill manual first published in 1764. And this manual is actually intended for reviews. So an officer, probably a general, could assemble soldiers and inspect them, basically see how they were doing, test their skills. And every soldier around the world should have been able to do these same motions in the exact same way. It's a foundation that everybody should share in common. Now, Keep in mind, again, it's a drill method. So see if you think this would be a good thing to use out on the battlefield. <clears throat> Take care. Poise, your fire lock. One, two. Cock, your fire lock. One, two. Handle, your cartridge. Prime. Shut your pan. One, two. Charge with cartridge. Draw your rammer. Ram down cartridge. Return your rammer. Shoulder your fire lock. One, two. Make ready. Zed, fire. So again, you can see that there's a lot of steps that go into simply getting a single shot off with one of these things. And that process from the 1764 manual is slow by design. You may have heard me actually say one, two at various times, counting out pauses built into that drill. So I'm not doing anything at those times other than counting. It's a slow, methodical method. It's great to see if all the men are properly trained. It's also a pretty effective training tool because you break that uh, series of motions down into discrete bits that you can then repeat over and over again as needed. But probably not the best thing to use in combat. Again, it's slow. There are a lot of orders involved probably wouldn't be able to hear someone telling you all those things if you were actually out on a battlefield. And so what the army does is takes that method and applies the fundamentals, the basics of it, to something that's a bit more practical. So what I'm going to show you now is how you can take that training and apply it in a real world setting. Take care. Prime load. Ready, set, fire. Well, hopefully you can see that that second firing method is just a little bit faster. There aren't as many words, there aren't any pauses built into it, but it does incorporate all of the same movements. We can actually compare the two side by side so you can see just how similar they are. Take care. Prime alert. Boys, your fire lock. One, two. Cock, fire lock. One, two. Handle, your cartridge. Prime. Shot, your pan. One, two. Charge, with cartridge. Make ready. Send, draw, your rammer. Fire. Ram down, cartridge. Return your rammer. Shoulder your fire lock. One, two. Make, ready. 
Zen! Fire! Make ready! Zen! Fire! Again, that second, more practical, perhaps battlefield method of loading, where the only commands are prime and load. Again, it incorporates all of the same motions, but it's really built upon training. And that's why drill is so very important. That's why the soldiers here at Michelinacanal and everywhere else around the world would spend so much time just practicing. They needed to master these weapons. They needed to master the techniques necessary to turn them into an effective weapon. And again, that's the real value of drill. It turns these soldiers, and especially these weapons that perhaps aren't the greatest on their own, into a pretty effective fighting force. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed our musket firing today, learned a little bit about how these weapons were used here at Michelinacanaw. And speaking of the fort, we do hope that you'll be able to come and join us here at Colonial Michelinacanaw sometime soon. <laughs>